Speaking of eggs, the next on the dreaded list of diseases is heart disease. Eggs are the number one source of choline, which can be converted by gut bacteria into a toxin that increases the risk of stroke, heart attack, and death. Eggs are also the number one source of cholesterol. Why does it matter if we have lots of cholesterol circulating throughout our bloodstream? Cholesterol doesn't just infiltrate our arteries and help that form those inflamed pockets of pus within our arterial walls, but may play an active role in the final fatal plaque rupture. Cholesterol crystals may actually pop our plaque. If you look at ruptured plaques from autopsies, they're filled with cholesterol crystals protruding from the plaque. Cholesterol in the plaque may get so supersaturated that it reaches a point like it crystallizes like rock candy. And the growing crystals may then burst the plaque open. Here's a cholesterol crystal shooting out the top of a test tube. When you look at the tips of the crystals under a microscope, they are sharp, jagged needles. They placed a thin membrane over the top of the test tube to see if the needles would poke through. And indeed, the sharp tips of the cholesterol needles um, cut through the membrane. So they showed that as cholesterol crystallizes, the peak volume then increases rapidly, and then sharp tip crystals can cut through and tear membranes, suggesting that this crystallization of supersaturated cholesterol in atherosclerotic plaques that can induce those final ruptures. And indeed, that's what you see on autopsy. All patients who died of acute heart attacks had these perforating cholesterol crystals like this, uh, sticking out of their plaques, but no crystals were found perforating the arteries of people with severe atherosclerosis that first died of other kind of non-cardiac causes. This can explain why dramatically lowering cholesterol levels with diet and drugs if necessary can reduce the risk of fatal heart attack by pulling cholesterol out of the artery wall, decreasing the risk of crystallizing these cholesterol needles that can then pop the plaques in our arteries. High cholesterol can also cause what's called fatty liver disease, our next global chronic disease epidemic. Fatty deposits in our liver can trigger inflammation and result in liver cancer, failure, and death. And again, and maybe these crystals, cholesterol crystals, triggering the progression of fatty liver into serious hepatitis. We're talking dietary cholesterol, the cholesterol people eat in eggs and uh, other animal products. Strong association between cholesterol intake and hospitalization and death from cirrhosis and liver cancer. And beyond just the crystals, dietary cholesterol may oxidize and directly cause uh, toxic and carcinogenic effects. And it was not appreciated until recently that the average cholesterol in the United States, the so-called normal levels, were actually abnormal, accelerating the blockages in our arteries and putting a large fraction of the normal population at risk. Having a normal cholesterol in a society where it's normal to drop dead of a heart attack, not necessarily a good thing. Normal cholesterol levels may be fatal cholesterol levels. And cholesterol lowering, moderation kills. Even if all Americans kept their total cholesterol below the recommended 200 millions would develop coronary artery disease. Strong evidence uh, shows we need to keep our total cholesterol under at least 150 to stem the epidemic. What kind of evidence? Well, in many cultures, coronary disease is practically unheard of when total serum cholesterol under 150. Here in the U.S., the famous Framingham Heart Study, few under 150 developed heart disease and none died from it. We cannot continue to have these public and private organizations at the forefront of health leadership recommending to the public a dietary plan that guarantees that millions will perish of the very disease that the guidelines are supposed to prevent. The reason given by health authorities to not tell people the truth, for not advocating what the science shows is best, was that it might frustrate the public, who may have difficulty getting their cholesterol levels that low. Right? But the public's greatest frustration might come from not being informed of the optimal diet for health. Heart disease can be reversed with a plant-based diet. The evidence justifies igniting a social movement, let the people lead, and eventually the government will follow. You know, some criticize plant-based diets for being extreme. You want extreme, though? Check out the consequences 
of our present dying. Having a breastbone sawed in half for bypass surgery, or having a stroke that renders one mute, or having a breast, colon, prostate, or rectum removed for cancer. Now that's extreme. Bean burrito, easy, right? Instead of just bypassing the problem, literally, you can treat the cause. Arrest and reverse heart disease, our number one killer, with a whole food, plant-based diet. Next on the list is arthritis.